G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add forces together using an example. So here we're asked, find the resultant, R, of the forces F1, F2, and F3 acting on this bizarrely shaped structure just here. Okay, so this is the force F1, this is the force F2, this is the force F3. Okay, have a shot at this yourself first and then come back when you're done. Okay, well, the way to solve this problem is to first deconstruct all of these force vectors into horizontal and vertical components, noticing that to the right is considered positive and upwards is considered positive. So let me show you how to do that. F1 can be written as a vector, which is going to be 60 sine 30 in the horizontal. So it's going to be 60 sine 30 in the horizontal and it's going to be minus 60 cosine 30 in the vertical. Minus 60 cosine 30 in the vertical, right? Now notice it's negative because it's gonna be pointing down here and that's negative because up is considered positive, okay? And if you were to evaluate that into your calculator, this would be um, 30 newtons in the horizontal and minus 51.96 newtons just there, okay? So that's your force vector F1 deconstructed into horizontal and vertical components. Let's do F2 now. Well, we know that F2 can be written as 40 cosine 60, 40 cosine 60, and 40 sine 60, like this. 40 sine 60, don't forget Newtons. And when you plug that into your calculator, you're gonna get 20, and then 34.64 newtons like this, okay? So just to make it clear, 20 newtons is the horizontal component of this force, and 34.64 is the vertical component of this force. We've got one more force to deal with, and that's F3. And this is a pretty easy one, no trigonometry required. We know it's entirely in the horizontal, and because it's pointing to the left, it's negative. So it's gonna be minus 50i, and then zero j like this. Right, and that's force three. So we've got all of our forces already figured out. The resultant force vector is going to be R, and it can be written as F1 plus F2 plus F3. Right, it's the sum of all the forces acting on this particular point. F1 plus F2 plus F3, like this. Right, and if you were to find, you were to add up all of these, we simply add up their I and J components respectively. So it's gonna be 30 plus 20 minus 50, right? And let's do this in one go. This is going to be 30 plus 20 minus 50, right? We're adding the I components and then we add the J components. So it's gonna be minus 51.96 plus 34.64 and then plus zero like this and that's Newtons. And if you evaluate this into your calculator, you'll be left with amazingly zero and um, minus 17.32 Newtons like this. So we can see now that our resultant force vector amazingly has no component in the I direction and it's negative in the J. So our resultant force vector now will actually look like this. It'll be purely downwards. This will be our resultant force vector. And to make that really clear, let me also draw this bizarrely shaped structure again so you can see. It looks like this. It looks like this. So these two things will behave identically, right? With noticing that we can replace all of these three forces with just our resultant force vector, which is acting downwards at 17.32 Newtons. Okay, that's the example problem, guys. I hope that made sense. Cheers.